everyone. This is uh, Denise Raleigh from the Gail Borden Public Library here in Elgin, Illinois. And we're, we're thank everyone for tuning in. What a year we've had, uh, again, during these pandemic times, the library has, has made awesome changes in order to uh, serve this community. And my special guest, as we go over our top 10 list for our last year, here serving this community in this like ever so challenging time frame. Is who else but our CEO, Carol Metal? Welcome, Carol. Hi, Denise, and hello to everybody watching online. It's good to be here. And in spite of all the challenges, boy, we got a lot done this year. And we'd love to go through our top 10, as Denise said, with you. And you could see what all has occurred at the Gail Borden Public Library. Oh, yeah. And without further ado, we're going to dig right into this. And what is behind this library, the top thing that, that the top element that brings us in, in service to this community is our people. And we've got new people helping us govern. And uh, we're going to talk. Uh, Carol, you want to start us off talking sure. about some new faces? We want to say a very warm welcome to our new board members. Uh, and new foundation members. And this year we welcomed uh, John Kokoris, who also joined our foundation board, Amy Procott, and Joy Simmons. And Denise, take the foundation. We have a wonderful foundation whose purpose is, is to raise funds that allows us to bring those extra things like live talks with the International Space Station. A lot of those exhibits that come through here are, are, are funded through our foundation and with many other partnerships with organizations and we're thankful to all their work. So we welcomed new foundation members, uh, Laura Badola, Beth Kruger, and Yaneth Medina. And, and a huge thanks to all these people. When they're in service to this library, uh, I, I, we love it how they join our mission and all of these people bring their own talents to bear in, in all of our work. And so it's, it's a fantastic uh, opportunity uh, for folks. And we are th so thankful that these people join us. Um, another thing we'd like to talk about is even during these types of times, uh, we were the library was recognized for some of its work. And, and Carol, start us off with the big one. Yes, absolutely. Uh, th this year, the Gail Borden Public Library was named a five-star library by the National Publication Library Journal. So we were very, very pleased to receive that award. And in addition, we were named honorable mention in the National Competition uh, Klein Foundation Community Impact Prize. You know, Denise, there were only two honorable mentions and Gail Borden was one of them. Yeah, and, and I love the title of that one. The idea that it's about impact and this five-star library is about people using our library as well. But that impact award says, we're, you know, we're helping to change, change lives. And, and again, we thank our many partners who help make this happen for us. Uh, the Elgin Hispanic Network presented our own Flor Ch uh, Chavez with Person of the Year for her, I'm going to read that, for her determination to connect the community with programs and are include, that are inclusive and culturally relevant. The other one that uh, we think uh, near and dear to our heart, it's a partner that we partner with just continually, and that's Centro de Información. And we were named the 2021 uh, partnership. We were given the 2021 Partnership Award, and that's for our work uh, on the Census Initiative and the COVID Assistance Program. So we thank Centro for recognizing. We thank Centro for being a wonderful partner uh, with us and, and Elgin uh, Hispanic Network as well. Uh, it's really allowed us to have greater impact with some of our work. A new initiative in 2021 was the launch of our One Book, One Community. And this program launched in May with the uh, uh, famous book, News of the World by Paulette Giles. This allowed people of different backgrounds and experiences in our community to read the book 
all at the same time, basically throughout the summer and discuss ideas found within its pages. Through this program, it, it encouraged understanding, it promoted literacy, and the community was given the opportunity to connect through a shared reading experience. The highlight was when we connected with Paulette Giles and had a wonderful Zoom uh, um, program with her, a fascinating woman. And I can tell you that we're continuing it. This summer, we will have another One Book, One Community. So stay tuned to know what that title is going to be. We're working it out as we speak. Uh, another really wonderful new initiative, and this is we were drafted from community members to take part in this, and we're very proud of our impact, but we're the Elgin Area Pandemic Assistance Team, and that's a grant from the Illinois Public uh, Health Association. And we started out with a team of six members, and that was led by Martha Martinez, and our, our charter was to help people that were negatively impacted by the pandemic. And that was, we, it was with vaccines, vaccine appointments, vaccine cards. It is uh, rental assistance, utility assistance, commodities, cleaning products, food has been a huge, uh, uh, huge need. I believe at this juncture, we have been asked to extend through June of 2022, but we have helped over 1500 people uh, with, with needs. We have also, I think, outreach to over 10,000 people about the need to be vaccinated, to be, to be socially distanced, to act in a way that we can halt this transmission. So we're very proud of, of the work that we're continuing to do. Again, we have hours every day, one to five in the, at the main library, but this is a really unique, <laughs> offering for the Gail Borden Public Library. We were, Martha Martinez was actually asked to speak at a congressional subcommittee, which was fantastic to talk about how we reach uh, a hard to reach community. And uh, it's been inspiring to see their work and to hear some of the stories of the people who got through the night because they got food, because they got their medicines. Uh, they, uh, because they got it vaccinated, because they helped them get it, find a vaccination uh, and, and get them signed up. We also host uh, clinics from time to time. We had one last Saturday where over 150 people received their booster shots. Uh, so I, uh, again, thank you for Natalie, who's running a back end of our Zoom. She's got our uh, gailborden.info slash COVID help. If you are in need of assistance, I just urge you to reach out. This is a bilingual team and they are here from one to five in person at the library on weekdays, but their, their website right there will provide a phone number where you can reach them and also an email. And they're really good about uh, following up and making sure people get what they need. Um, so that's been a fantastic new offering for the library this year. And moving on, this past summer, we were very excited to announce the opening of Roland Donuts at the main library. This edition allows our customers to grab a coffee, donut, sandwich, or many other tasty treats in our cafe space, or to enjoy uh, eating outside on the patio area, which overlooks our beautiful sculpture garden while visiting the main library location. So we hope that you will uh, enjoy this cafe. It is open six days a week. And when we op reopen our patio, it's a lovely place to go and, and have a bite to eat. There were also a multitude of technology improvements over the past year at the library, including our online library card registration. This automated form has allowed our customers to easily register for a library card online by collecting customer information and making sure that they, are, they live within our district boundaries, creating a permanent card number and then sending the customer a confirmation email. This allows our customers to access our electronic resources, even in the middle of the night. We also have a new smartphone mobile app 
which allows customers to skip the lines and check out and renew items with a smartphone. Popular features such as digital library cards, searching the library catalog and placing holds are also available on the new app. And we also saw updates to our uh, technology lab area. Uh, we got an upgrade of um, a new camera, a new projector, which allows easy connectivity from mobile devices, an ADA compliance station, and we also uh, acquired more laptops, which are available for checkout on the second floor and can be used throughout the library. Starting in September of last year, the main library began uh, offering license plate renewal stickers. With this new service, library re Illinois residents are able to renew license plate stickers here at the main library. A library card is not required. Uh, in the short time it's been available, the service has proven to be very popular for our community. Uh, between October 20 and June 21, staff processed 663 license plate stickers. And with the DMV closing down week here, uh, various weeks uh, because of the pandemic, uh, this has been a, a really a lifesaver to a lot of people so that their license plate uh, will be um, to date and, and not out of date. <laughs> yeah, We're and very Carol, happy to do that. Carol, this has been so popular. Where do you, when a person walks into the main library, where do they go for the license plate renewal? They go over to our customer relations areas. You enter the main library, veer to the left, or excuse me, veer to the right, and then go to our registration desks. And they will take care of it in a very timely and efficient manner for you. Good to know. Well, there, and we've got a lot more of new offerings this more this year at the library um, due to demands of our uh, community. And uh, again, some of these have just been a spectacular impact. Carol, what about the, tell us about the new Sprinter. Yes, we were so grateful to our foundation, which purchased uh, a used Sprinter, a 2014, um, which we uh, um, have pur purposed it into a mini bookmobile and also more recently a tech mobile. So not only delivering materials to uh, schools and uh, the public at large, but also uh, being able to check out um, uh, Chromebooks and hotspots. Um, this has been uh, just very well received. People are so very grateful for it. And we are grateful to our foundation for uh, adding this really critical uh, vehicle to our fleet. <laughs> yeah, and um, I, I just wanna say it's also uh, to the taxpayer's benefit, just like the bookmobile, uh, Carol is a wonderful shopper for quality vehicles. This was used and uh, refreshed and made into what we needed, but at a much lower cost. And so, Carol, I congratulate you for continuing to take care of those purse strings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, we have uh, something outside as well following on is something new this year that people saw behind the library. This is where you could wiggle and jump, uh, but it was right along the river at the, uh, on the river walk there is really nice and it's a story walk. And the book we had there was called Wiggle by Doreen Cronin. And it was our first story walk and it could be held, it was fun, it was outdoors, and it was during a time where it was really much safer to be outdoors, but it gave people to, a chance to read, interact with their kids in both English and Spanish. So uh, we'll do that more often, but it was a, a wonderful success. And people could text in a picture of themselves with the, uh, with the wiggle and get a picture back. So uh, it was just a fun way to help ease the pain of what was happening around us and have some fun at the same time. This year we grew our collections. We added a very special memory care collection. It was created to support at-home caregivers and professional caregivers, as well as provide items to engage those living with dementia. 
This collection includes jigsaw puzzles, toys, and more. In addition, we added 23 learning at home kits that were added to the collection. These kits contain a variety of activity sets, games, and other fun learning tools to help customers reinforce skills and subjects, such as language, mathematics, and social studies. We have a new streaming service, Medici.tv, and it was introduced to our customers. It's a wonderful service providing access to over 2,000 of the world's most timeless, beautiful music, including concerts, archived historical concerts, operas, jazz music, ballets, documentaries, artist portraits, and educational programs, as well as master classes. A, just a mar if you're especially into jazz or classical music, you can't do better than uh, tuning into Medici TV. We also had uh, some additional space that we have been able to turn over to the public. The Sally Lee Fox and Eagle Rooms were uh, uh, built out and these newly renovated rooms that are accessible from our kids space area provide our young customers with much needed programming space that didn't exist before. The assistance and implementation of a language uh, contest as part of our soon to be famous Eleanor author project, Denise is going to talk about. <laughs> And again, thank you to Carol. She's been a big backer. The soon to be famous Illinois Author Project has been around since 2014. And Gail Borden has been a big part of that as well as libraries throughout the state. And the whole idea of that was to, to marry our customers needs with good reads with uh, great talented authors who are self published. And you know, it's, we have found that our customers don't care who the publisher is, they care about great uh, stories. This year, it was so exciting that we offered our first Spanish language contest and it was called De La Pagina a la Fama. And we, our winner has been all over the news. You guys have probably already heard of her, but it was Pascuala Herrera from Franklin Park. And, uh, People have so enjoyed her story uh, and it's kind of an, uh, a journey of someone's life through adversity where it's a, such a positive outcome. And uh, she's been on multiple shows talking about uh, the book and why she wrote it, but it is truly a wonderful new addition to the soon to be famous Illinois Author Project. And Denise, well, let's add that uh, the adult fiction was won by uh, uh, an author who uh, came through the Gail Borden Library. India Powers, an Algenite. Yes, uh, again, it's uh, she won adult fiction. And we have been so a part of this project like it's for, for many years. And we just couldn't seem to get our, our authors through. And yeah, India Powers, an Algenite of many years, a, a library lover. Uh, used the Gail Borden Library in her research, uh, won the adult fiction this year. So we're so very proud to, to burst through with a winner. Um, I believe she's already given a Zoom program, but in the near future, we hope to have her here at the library in person. Definitely, definitely. Um, the other things that we've added were uh, Press Reader was added, and that's a cool service. It's got 7,000 newspapers and magazines from 120 countries and 60 different languages. So that's available through our uh, Press Reader. We also uh, want to mention another thing that this is a, a wonderful way we impact our community is Studio 270 formed a new partnership with the Kane County Juvenile Justice Council Subcommittee on Restorative Practices and now offers programs on teen rights. The studio has also reached out to the Illinois Student Assistance Commission to provide college readiness resources and programs to our students. You know, we're such a young community in Elgin, you know, it is so wonderful when we can add something for some of the younger members of our community because the, the lasting impact we can have in, in the future of our local community. 2021 was a big year for new civic engagement opportunities. And here at the library, we had discussions and programs that focused on social issues such as racism, policing, poverty, extremism, voting, and more. 
Some of those programs were voter palooza, encouraging people to register to vote. Extreme in the mainstream, a community reads on racism, black voices, black joy story times, raising black voices, an author visit with Charles Waters, not quiet and not submissive, Asian American women speak out, and the study circles Elgin, which is a discussion series that uh, focuses on many social issues. Yeah, and Carol, when you're talking about that, we also would like to mention this Saturday at 1 p.m., we'll be opening the settlement exhibit and we'll be talking about some of these. Uh, and again, that's uh, Mayor Captain will be there, our trustee Tiffany Henderson, uh, uh, Councilman Corey Dixon, Museum Director Liz Morriston, uh, and, and Ernie Broadnax himself will be there and they'll they'll get into a little bit of the discussion of where do we go from here you know because all of uh, our communities are working with these type of them we're always trying to pro, you know proceed in a positive manner so hopefully this saturday's pro uh program will also highlight some of those areas the other thing we want to talk about of course of, of our top 10 and this seems like a stop uh, a, a strange top 10 but we want to talk about what the library did to keep people safe during this last year. And it's a heroic job. And we applaud, applaud all the all of our staff members, all of our security, all of uh, everyone who worked. You know, these were new rules that were implemented, new procedures that were implemented, and people were so flexible and saw the need and, and really everyone joined together to make this happen. But uh, so we really took a lot of safety precautions. Uh, we did diligently clean surfaces on an ongoing basis. The library was uh, HVAC, uh, was upgraded to MERV 14. And that was really wonderful that our facilities team could figure that out and work uh, and get that done because that's hospital grade. Um, we had a continual uh, air handling system at South Elgin and Rako branches. Uh, that would also, for UVC lighting, was uh, providing protection with those air. The, um, we installed tons and tons of plexiglass, as did so many other communities, but that's, you know, as, ever, as everyone else who's had to do an uh, installation, it's a big job to get it, and it's a good, it's a big job to install it, uh, but we thank everyone for making that happen for our staff and customers. Uh, we offering and we continue to offer touchless drive-through services at our main library and Rako branch, and uh, and so customers who really wanted to uh, to uh, connect with us in a touchless atmosphere, we they could still get their their materials from us, um, and of course we continue to follow CDC guidelines, and we appreciate all of our customers who who keep up with our update page as we have to daily keep up with what the state and the government, all the other government, uh, the authorities that impact us as they dictate. So, you know, we thank our staff, we thank our customers for helping us provide a safe environment to serve you. Um, so Carol, what do you think about that top 10? I know we didn't, we weren't able to mention everything, I think that it shows what a busy and productive year that we had here at the Gilboard Library. Uh, as you were said earlier, Denise, 2021 had its challenges, but we are humbled to look back at this list along with everything else that we've accomplished this year. The support we felt from our community and being able to see the difference we've been able to make in your lives truly makes it worth it. Oh, and, and well said. So Carol, thanks for joining me and going over some of this. And it, it was really hard to select a top 10 to talk about, but, and there was so much that we didn't talk about, but it, it was all in service to this wonderful uh, local community that, uh, you know, we're, we're fueled by the power of community. And uh, in this unique time, I think we were able to deliver and, and what a joy it was to do that. And thank you for having me on this episode. And I want to thank our community so much. You are the reason that we exist and everything we do is with you in mind. 
And as we wrap up this year, we just keep reminding ourselves that the best is yet to come. So look out 2022. Bye everyone. Bye everyone.